The Unify Cloud Gateway Max comes with a quad-core ARM Cortex A53 processor at 1.5 GHz, has 3 gigs of DDR4 memory, comes with 5 2.5 gig ports, 1 for WAN and 4 for LAN, and yes, you can reassign one of those LAN ports to be a second WAN that can be used for failover or load balancing. The device also comes with the Unify controller built in that can support up to 30 Unify devices, which could be a mix of switches and access points. It can also run Unify Protect, Unify Access, Unify Connect, Unify Interspace, and Unify Talk. If you want to use this device for Unify Protect, there are options for models with NVMe storage of note. If you get this device without any added storage, it also does not come with the tray adapter needed for the NVMe, but Unify does sell that separately on their site. This device maxes out at only 16 watts, but generally idles right around 10 watts, which is really impressive. While specs are great and easy to look up, what I really want to cover is how it performed using it for my home network, and the too long didn't watch is that it performed really well over several months. While I didn't have any issues during my testing, I will note that I left this on the official release channel for all of the software, so I didn't want to bias any results, all the updates performed perfectly fine. I really like that these devices by default auto update, so no worries that if you recommend this to a less technical friend that you'll have some problems or that the device will get very out of date and well, all the drama that comes with that. Actually, now that I think about it, we probably have a lot of technical friends who don't keep things up to date either, so let's leave that box turned on. While this device is able to route IDS IPS at 1.5 gigs and route the full 2.5 gigs with that turned off, I do want to dive into VPN performance and some other details, so let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, Check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, before we get into the testing, we need to talk about the setup here. So if we go to settings and we look at the control plane, we can see that I have network protect, access connect, Interspace all installed. Now, I'm not really doing much with Access Connect or Interspace right now. Mostly it's just Protect a Network that's taxing the system. I just wanted to at least have some things loaded on here. Also, if we're in here and we go over to Security and we look at Intrusion Prevention, I do have this turned on and I have it turned on to high. So I want to make sure I'm testing these VPN speeds with full network protection turned on. Now, whether or not you even need this turned on, I've got another video you'll find linked down below where I talk about the efficacy of intrusion detection, not specifically to Unify, but more broadly as it applies here in 2024. Now, Protect does have one camera attached. It's actually right there. You can see me waving. So this is uh, just constantly recording, has some detections in there. So it's doing something. It's just kind of sitting on my back studio bench. Uh, but I wanted to make sure, like I said, that you understand the configuration I have set up and what's on the system. And by the way, I will let you know right now, because I've already done the testing, that having Protect on or off didn't make any substantial VPN speeds. It's more about the intrusion detection. But let's jump into those speed tests. Now, we'll be doing the speed test with the OpenVPN server, which I have set up here, and the WireGuard server, which I have set up. So right now, neither are connected, so we'll do the connections. I'm just going to be using a Debian system that is behind here to connect to. So if you go to the client devices, we have this Debian 12 lab. This is what I'll be connecting to at 192.168.33.82. Uh, and the other one's going to be in front of this. So if you look at the networks and we go to the internet, uh, 172.16.16.108. This is the WAN. It's an internal WAN address that I have. So these are not public IP addresses, but this allows me to have my system connect directly to it so we can do the test. And we're just going to run some basic iPerf speed tests. Now, this is a single Debian server, as its name implies on the WAN side of the Unify. So let's first do sudo openvpn unify.openvpn. This is just me downloading the openvpn file to be able to connect to it, to be able to get the ping to work. And we can actually do this right here, ping, and we'll see that there's no ping as soon as we connect to openvpn. 
There we go. Now we're able to ping that address. We're connected to it. So now we're routing through the unified device. And I'll let's go ahead and do uh, iperf, connect and see what kind of speeds we get. About 140, 150. Not bad. I'm doing this all in real time so you can see the results here. And it's a reasonable speed that we got out of here. And let's go ahead and try turning off the IDS and see if it's any faster. So we're just going to switch this to off and hit apply changes. And we're going to run the test again. And you can see maybe a little bit more speed. So we had 140, 137 here and just a little bit more speed. So not substantial with OpenVPN. So let's do the same test with WireGuard and we'll do it with IPS off first because we still have it off. So we'll clear this. We're going to go control C and then we want to sudo WG quick up WG one. That's the tunnel I've created. So before I do that, let's do the same ping test. So we'll show ping not working. So as we do this, all right, now we're able to communicate. So we're routing this through just like we were with OpenVPN. Then we'll do the iperf test, clear it. And let's see how fast it is. Not bad, a little over 500 here. Slowing down a little bit just as it catches up and 485, 482, not bad. Let's run it one more time. I just want to see if there's any changes in this, but it looks pretty consistent here. And I've did this multiple times. WireGuard sometimes starts out a little bit faster on here. It's just part of the way it's catching up with the packets, but yeah, it seems to work quite well. Now let's go back and we'll turn it on advanced. We'll set it on high exactly as we had it before with the OpenVPN test. So now I've applied this, that'll start back up Sericata in the back end. Let's rerun the test again. And we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown here. So we had 415, 417 here. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see it was 486, 484. So there's not a substantial even set at high speed difference with Sericata running, but there is at least some just so you're aware. Now, while I did those VPN tests with only one camera running, and I mentioned it turning that camera off and turning protect off didn't seem to make any difference. I don't know what that limit is. If you have like four cameras attached, does it get slower and how many before it's actually a problem or how well do they perform? I don't know that I'd recommend this for any of the larger camera deployments. There's obviously some limitations where you can't deploy that many cameras on here. And the nice thing is though, this will easily get you started on the Unify ecosystem. And then you could always migrate later to bigger devices or move the cameras to a new NVR. And they've got quite a few options available here in September 2024 for that. Back to the device itself, I think this is a great start into the ecosystem of Unify, where you have the controller built in, you can experience Protect and all the other services that they offer, connect and talk and everything else, and even access can be set up on this little device here. And then you could just get a Unify PoE switch or just use an injector and have Wi-Fi. I mean, having a few devices hardwired right to it, having, you know, four LAN ports, or even if you swapped one and you have three LAN and two WAN, I think that's a good configuration for the average person that's probably looking to do this, along with the auto updates. And as I said, using this for several months here as my home home network, I didn't run any problems at all. The updates worked well. I think they may have annoyed my son when they happened at 3 a.m. because he sometimes is still gaming then. Uh, but that's the time I set it. And that's just the most convenient time because I can't have it disrupting me during my work hours. And 3 a.m. is not my work hours. Would I buy this device? Yes, is the answer. Would you buy this device? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. I really think uh, Unify has come a long way. Now, I will mention that... Uh, yeah, the VPN, I think they could do better. The open VPN setup is good, but not great because there could be a lot more options for some fine tuning in open VPN. A Unify to me dumbs it down and doesn't expose enough. I also, when I was uh, goofing something up that turned out to be my fault, the logging is still not exactly there. So I will put that as a gripe, but this is a Unify gripe and not anything specific to the device. That is the state of their software. Now the state of the Unify controller software compared to the things I complained about a while ago, compared to today in September 24 are mostly gone. They have dramatically 
just done leaps and bounds of better to actually have a proper OpenVPN server, WireGuard server built in here. Both of those things are great. I think they've done a good job of updating the firewall rules to make them better. I think there's still a little bit more to go and I expect them to uh, keep rolling forward with that, but the, they've made entries in the firewall easier. The fact that they have the traffic control that they do with the traffic inspection they do is really impressive on this. And I had no problems that identified the traffic quite well. I could tell if I'm watching, you know, Disney Plus or whatever and uh, get a lot of device information have the application level control on there. I think they did a great job on this. And oh, well, like I said, I would be recommending this. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content on the channel. Tell me what you think of this little device here uh, and the form factor. If you're curious where it fits in the lineup of Unified Devices, check out my other video where I talk about the different models and different options that they have available. And uh, you can decide if this one is the one for you or maybe it's that Unify Express because I've talked about that one and I have now bought a few of those and put them in for friends that need help. And uh, those have been working really well. I haven't had any problems with the Unify Express devices that I've put in places. And uh, this one for someone who wants a little bit more advanced than what the Unify Express offers, I think is a really good purchase. Let me know. Thanks.